Hello world. Hello everybody. This is Ciprian Voiculescu, aka Mogulu, and I'm uh, glad to be back in the booth. I'm going to be here with you for another interesting and uh, hopefully spectacular match. It's a match uh, counting for the quarterfinals of Mets Bucharest Open, the fourth edition. And uh, Mark Gray from uh, Great Britain will take on uh, Scottish man Jason Shaw. So Mark Gray defeated uh, last round Petri Makonen in uh, a heel-heel match while... Um, Jason Shaw stormed out Mario He 10 to 4. Another quarterfinal is um, the one who gets another young gun in front of Shane Van Burning. That's Fedor Gorst playing against Shane. Shane have uh, had uh, Two heel heel matches today, and he won it. Uh, both of them against the other two young guns, Oliver Solnoki from Hungary and uh, Viktor Zielinski from Poland. Damianos uh, Damianos Jalurakis was having a safety battle at uh, nine eight for Shamat. And uh, for all the Greek guys, I have a good news and a bad news. So for all the Greek guys who wanted to know about uh, Damianos Jalurakis, I have a good news and a bad news. Um, the good news is the match is over. The bad news is that Marcus Shamat is out. So Damianos Jalurakis is in the quarterfinals. Jalurakis is in the quarterfinals. He won the hill hill match against Marcus Shamat. So for all the Greek uh, guys watching Jalurakis in the final eight, he will play the winner from the match Eklend Kachi and Ralf Suke. And um, we are preparing to see Mark Gray playing Jason Shaw. Another quarterfinal will be Jakob Konyar against uh, Shevchek or Albin Ushan. At this moment, uh, Shevchek is uh, leading Albin six games to four. And um, the last quarterfinal is uh, Shane Van Burning against Viktor Zielinski. Good morning, Ricky Mitchell. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Thank you for being with us um, these last three days. Well, let's see uh, some uh, thumbs up and love from the Greek guys who appreciate uh, the win of Damianos Jalorakis, the jump master against uh, the Napoleon, Marcus Shamat. Ernst Weidel. It was a uh, 7-6 for Eklent. I do not have any updates. I do not have any updates, so uh, not on the match that Albin Ocean is playing against uh, 
Shevchek. It was 6-4 and it is 6-4 for Shevchek. And uh, we're gonna shoot for the leg now. Mark Gray against Jason Shaw. Great Britain against uh, Scotland. In fact, England against Scotland. <laughs> um, forget the flags. Forget the nine there. It's a race to ten. All the matches uh, in this stage are races to ten. Yes, Stamatis Pool. Last year final was Wojtek against uh, Nick Malai. Malai is out. So guys, don't be shy. Feel free to share this live stream. I'll be happy to come in this uh, quarterfinal for you. Nasser Khalifi is here. Scott A. Bosker says I'll take Shaw. And where do you take him? Do you want to play some sets with Jason Shaw? So let's see the first rack of the match. I think we will have a nice match. They're both uh, quite uh, fast players. Kalim Prahase, I didn't said that Shane is playing Zielinski. So behave, please. If you're not hearing well, do a checkup. I said he played and won Hill Hill matches against Oliver Solnoki and Viktor Zielinski. By the way, I watched that match in the arena, so please keep your words for yourself. And now he is playing a third young gun, Mr. Fedor Gors from Russia. Hello, Jorge Santos. Gabi Jalba is watching. Hello, Gabi. Don't forget, guys, it's free to share. I would like to have uh, some shares for this match. Jason Shaw is uh, trying a safety shot and uh, he keeps the cue ball behind the three and the five, I think. Yes, and J-Pool player, yes. Kalim Prahase, you have no idea where the arena is and where the booth of the commentator is. So please shut up. The booth of the commentators is uh, like uh, 30 meters from the arena so maybe you should come to IDM club to see the geography of the place and uh, again watch your language Kalim Prahase because uh, we don't need uh, such uh, bad mouths around thank you Darko Stefan Adrian Malcolm Luck Lucky Another coffee could be good. Oh my God. As I said before, good news for Mark Gray, bad news for Mark Gray. The jump shot was uh, incredible, but the scratch was uh, dramatic. Mark Gray is playing uh, with his uh, usual cue. Very thin uh, shaft. He's a former snooker player and uh, probably he's still playing with uh, a snooker cue. <laughs> Hello to Sotiris Deli Giorgos.
Yes, Tamatis Police, his snooker queue. So we have predictions here. Paulo Santos says uh, Shaw will win 10 4. Well, uh, Shane uh, was uh, on the TV table uh, just uh, before this round, so uh, we would like to give you more and more players on the TV table. Maybe uh, if Shane will win his match with uh, Fedor, uh, he will get another chance uh, on the TV table because uh, both of the semifinals will be streamed. Kalim Prahase, thank you. You are such a sweetie pie. Too bad you don't uh, understand. I'm sure you made um, you you have took lessons of English in Oxford. I didn't. And uh, I have uh, an update. Um, from uh, my friend Andreas, Wojciech Shevchek is leading Albin Ocean seven games to four. Yes, you know, Colleen. Oh. NJ pool player, I don't have anything uh, against the trolls, but I would like to respond to them. Because uh, if you don't respond to trolls, they will think they uh, are right always. And if uh, they are not right, I'd like to point that. Oh, what's a what a scratch for Gray. Too bad. And that's an easy an easy table for uh, Jason Shaw. He only has to connect the dots here. No problem on the table. Greetings for from Portugal, says uh, Jose Oliveira. Darko Stefan Adrian Suke is still playing. He was uh, training. Uh, Eklent was in front 7-6. Uh, I do not have any um, updates. No, Carla Verge. I do not have a chip on my shoulder. So easy and fast track for Jason Shaw. Well, uh, Stamatis Pool, Wojtek, a strong underdog. Man, he's uh, holding uh, he's holding the title. He won last year, so... Shan uh, Howie. No, Chris Melling is not in this tournament, unfortunately. I was um, sad to hear that he will not come. Well, yes, Ryan App. Uh, we do not ban people unless uh, they are uh, doing dirty stuff around. And Kalim Prahase is an old uh, acquaintance of mine. <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit of um, mutual love. <laughs> now, uh, we may disagree. He may have his opinion. I have my opinions. So uh, it's only to have... Um, uh, natural and uh, respectful uh, dialogue. Thank you, Don Laugh. Florin Memedi, I will try to have an update for Eklent Kachi's score. Yes, this might be a quick match. Anthony Farley, the quarterfinals match uh, matches. Uh, we have uh, Mark Gray Jason Shaw here. Fedor Gorst is playing Shane Van Bening. 
And uh, Jakub Konyar is waiting for a winner from the match Shevchek Albin Ocean. And uh, Damianos Jalurakis will play the winner from the match Eklent Kachi Ralf Suke. Kalin Prahase, shut up. Shut up, Kalin. <laughs> and change that flag. Are you from Argentina? Kalin Prahase from Buenos Aires. Vamos. Kerim Krasniki, Joshua Filler didn't make it to this tournament. Kalin Mureshan raised to 10. Ignore uh, that 9 on the on the screen. It's a race to 10 all the matches in this uh, stage. Roman Palankerin, uh, last year the winner was Wojtek Shevchek. Kalim Prahase, I can't wait to be here when you are arriving in IDM Club. Unfortunately for you, I'm not playing pool for money. Bobby Hooker, yes. Sorry for that guy. Oh my god. Well, uh, Catalin Mureșan, I saw him um, playing against Makon in a few frames. Let me tell you, Mark Gray can shoot. Confident shot from Mark Gray. Good comeback for the three. Look how smooth he maneuvers the cue ball. So yes, for the guys who just tuned in and didn't uh, know this uh, feature that we offer from uh, this uh, year is uh, the smart bracelets that monitor heart rhythm and we show the pulse of the players on the screens. Wow. 
So guys, uh, I have an update on the match between uh, Wojciech Shevchek and Albin Wushan. Uh, the news is that Albin Wushan conceded the game at 8-4 for Wojciech Shevchek. So Wojciech Shevchek uh, advances into the quarterfinal stage. Uh, Andreas uh, is telling me that uh, Albin uh, has missed again a nine ball and probably he decided uh, not to fight uh, more because probably he wasn't feeling too good. So uh, Wojciech Shevchek is in the quarterfinals uh, after Albin Wushan conceded the game, the, the match at 8-4 for Wojciech Shevchek. So uh, the um, defending champion is still in the race. He will play uh, Jakub Konyar in the quarterfinals. Thank you, Ray Rangel. Christian Sparallo Fisher. The draw is on www.9ball.ro. I will write it down. You're welcome, Stamatis Pool. Thank you, NJ Pool Player. Thank you. Alex Lely. Albin conceded. Cosmin Prundanu, no. The three Romanians who were in the last 32 lost their matches and now we are in the quarterfinals Kerim Krasniki now we are not uh, we are not streaming Whirlpool Masters because um, we do not have any connections with them you have to ask somebody else Well, I have to repeat uh, from uh, what I'm understanding, he missed for the second time a nine and he decided uh, to concede. Probably he wasn't uh, feeling uh, too good or too good with his game. So being down four games to eight, he decided that will be over for him his decision Platon Bokorisvili it's a race to 10 uh, that was uh, the data introducing the system before the tournament but uh, the organizers decided that uh, in the single elimination round the races will be to 10 so it's a race to 10 yes Tero thank you yes NJ pool player I'll be quit yes Wow, that's good for uh, Mark, I think. He has a shot for the one and the slight angle to go for the two. 
So guys, um, what do you think about this tournament, guys? Who do you think will win this uh, Mets Bucharest Open, the fourth edition? I have to tell you the quarterfinals. This one, Mark Gray against Jason Shaw. Fedor Gorst plays Shane Van Burning. Jakub Konyar plays Wojtek Shevchek. And Damianos Jalurakis is gonna play the winner between Kachi and Ralf. Inga Peter, um, um, his fellow countryman Andreas from who is uh, working for their um, federation. Uh, told uh, me before that uh, he missed a 9 at 6-4 for Wojciech and uh, now he said Albin conceded the game after uh, missing another 9 ball at 8-4. Anyway. Well, yes, Joe Rogan uh, <laughs> is doing a good uh, job on both uh, jobs, let's say. Yes, Lu Peng. Let's see gray, 50 shades of gray, what a miss. I think it seems uh, that Mark rushed a little bit the stroke, it wasn't very fluent in his mechanics and uh, the six uh, didn't uh, sink in the pocket. NJ pool players, <laughs> NJ pool player, you are a fan of most of the players. So you love everybody. Tobias Hoyes, not yet. I'd like to have an update on um, Eklund's match. So, for uh, anyone who is uh, around the arena and uh, it's close to the table where uh, Ralph and uh, Eklund is playing, can you send me a private message with an update of the score, please? Gerasimos, I do not know the scores between uh, Shane and F and uh, Fedor or uh, Konyar with Shevchek. Let's see Shaw missing. I don't know if he leaves something here. I'll go with the side view. No, it's uh, full snooker there.
So is there anyone in the arena who can hear me and can tell me what's the score between Eklant and uh, Ralph? I'm so pissed off. Nobody is telling me nothing. So I'm gonna switch here. On the left, A1 is uh, Eklant against uh, Ralph. On A2 is Fedor against Shane. On A4 is Jakub against uh, Shevchek. I'm uh, doing that, Bobby Gerasim, as uh, I speak. I've uh, sent private messages, but probably they are uh, with their hands full. Yes, I know what's on the website, man, because I update at this moment the website. <laughs> but it's no longer 7.6 for sure. Kachi with a shot uh, in the side pocket. I'm gonna go uh, full view on this table. Ignore the score, probably is not 7 6 anymore for sure. So if they are shaking hands after this, uh, it means uh, <laughs> it's over, but we don't know. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with Kachi and Suke. And that was it. Eklent Kachi is in the quarterfinals. He will play Damianos Jalurakis. So we've solved that mystery. Eklent Kachi won the match against Ralph Suke. He will play Damianos Jalurakis. And we're watching Mark Ray. Wow, he was attacking the side pocket. And that is a brilliant shot. Brilliant. Chapeau bas pour Mark Ray. David Keith Harcrow. It was 7-6 the last time we have the chance to update the website, so... Costel Daniel Kikos Ladan is out. He lost to Makonen 9-2, uh, I think. Somebody says, Kachi for Albanian president. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't think he is into politics right now. Yes, Diamond Dallas Ducky, there was a quick match. Uh, it took only, I don't know, like um, maybe three hours. No, two hours and a half, maybe. Mark Gray uh, staying alive here. Closing the gap. So Kachi won 10 games to 8. Nice clearance for Mr. Uh, Mark Gray. Hey, hey, hey. That's a frame for Mark Gray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There was no frame for Mark Jason Shaw. Jump Master Damianos uh, will play Eklent Kachi. 
probably on uh, table A01. A01. Jason Shaw to break. So I can tell you now uh, the possible semifinals because uh, we're gonna stream both of them. So the winner of this match will play the first semifinal against uh, the winner of the match Jalurakis Kachi. And the second semifinal is formed by the winners from the matches Konyar against Shevchek and Gorst against Van Boening. Ogert Shkrepa. We are gonna stream from uh, this moment all the other matches remaining. Two semifinals and the final. So the semifinals will be uh, one after another at the TV uh, the TV table. This is the last eight. Economopoulos lost to Albin Ushan in a hill hill match on the TV table earlier. It was the first match of the day. So guys, guys, share it. And don't forget, for those of you who want to uh, see the rest of the matches, the semifinals and the big final today, don't forget like and follow IDM Pool Tour Facebook page. And when you follow, check the see first option so you will be notified when we are going uh, live with our broadcast. If Todi Radu Emanuel, I've just announced the possible semifinals. We do not know because we do not know who will win in the quarterfinals. The quarterfinals are uh, going uh, right now. You can check the pairing of the semifinalists on www.9ball.ro slash matches. And that's an easy finish for Jason Shaw. Six three for uh, Shaw. Wow, Joey Ab, thank you. You are the first one to see that. Yes, we know that was how he was uh, entered in the system. So bear with us. I think uh, the more important is what you see on the table. Who is taking the chalk in his hands while shooting? No, Roger Acker Blom. I do not know the scores on the other matches. If I will have an update, I will tell you. Katalin Moreshan, why not to be legal? 
as long as the chalk is not touching uh, a ball you can keep the chalk even uh, on your mouth Well, Jorge Santos, uh, the concentration is uh, very important in uh, any sport. Uh, the problem here is that um, in pool or in uh, snooker, you might uh, you might have been um, forced to play four or five games in a day to win a tournament, games of uh, one and a half, two, or maybe over two hours. So you have to be also very fit to to be able to shoot um, uh, correctly after eight or ten hours of pool. Thank you, Mark Williams. Yes, Greco ones, yes. You can keep the chalk wherever you want. Unless it's a foul. So, a little bit... Uh, a little bit difficult, but this should be in the pocket for Mark Gray. And it is. It's six four. Six four and um who knows? For sure uh Jason Shaw is the favorite in uh, this match. Bridge arm, bridge arm, Dimitris Mitrov Genius. Well, uh, NJ pool player. Uh, can you know if it's uh, contacting uh, the table? Thank you, John Latea. Thank you. So, guys, don't forget uh, you have a share button that you can hit. It's free to share. It's um, also um, showing us that uh, you love uh, pool. So if you love pool, you can share this. Even that uh, you are stuck here with me. Jason Shaw. It's able to come up with something from this. He has to avoid the side pocket and uh, to have a shot uh, at the six somehow somehow <laughs> it goes uh, very well for him great position thank you Muhammad al shamari Murata Itekian is uh, watching thank you Jose Oliveira we tried to have the best conditions uh, also for the players and for you, the viewers. <laughs> yes, Tero. <laughs> uh, you hide, hide it already. And now uh, the same uh, position to the nine, but uh, uh, 
on the other side of the table as uh, Mark Gray had the uh, last game. But this time Jason Shaw is uh, missing. He leaves a tough long shot for Mark Gray who can uh, close the gap between him and uh, Jason Shaw. Mark Williams, did you play in the main arena here in IDM club? I can tell you there is enough uh, room for uh, the players. Uh, maybe on um, TV it's showing uh, a little bit crowded. Wow. Mark Gray is missing and uh, leaving again. Maybe a little easier shot for uh, Jason Shaw. Wow. This time, no mistake for Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is uh, going up 7 4. Guys, I have to mention uh, the sponsors. Mets Bucharest Open, of course, uh, powered by Mets Cues, organized by IDM Club. Also, we have to thank Dr. Fisher, Ivan Simonis, Zen Tips, Aramid Billiard Balls, and Turtle Rack. And we are back with Margrave breaking. Of course. Yes, Martin Saviki, if you have an extension, uh, it's uh, one uh, area uh, at the side pocket on the le on the right, as we watching uh, where uh, could be a little bit crowded, but uh, any other place around the table, it's. Uh, Okay for the players. Okay, I'm back. Whew. Daniel Candy is back. Food took forever to arrive at our table. Sorry. Forever. Yeah. And but you know, forever is over. <laughs> <laughs> I we were joking actually because it took so long. I said we're probably gonna be at about six two or six three when I'm done with <laughs> eating and getting back into the booth. And it was pretty correct because. What did you eat? Uh, just mm? the the place place here in the. Uh, IDM club. What? What? Oh, pasta con pollo. That was pasta amazing. Pasta con pollo. It was nice. Arriba. <laughs> but it was awesome. Only this. Yes. And it took forever. Yeah, I don't know why. It, but the food, it was the crowded was nice. in the restaurant. No, it wasn't. So that's why I was, oh. we were so surprised. But uh, I just I walked past the booth when it seemed Jason Shaw had a bad contact on the nine, so he missed it, and then. Yes, he missed the nine. Then Margrave missed the nine. Yeah, and then, he and took then it after. Uh, Shaw didn't miss the nine. Yeah. Um, Emmanuel, these are Brunswick American pool tables. The TV table you see is the Go Crown Five, which is a little bit different than the Go Crown Four in the arena. But both are equally awesome tables to play on. Nope. He's missed that jump, but he's played a good cue ball. Two-way shot. Any good pool in this one? Like one-way traffic from... Uh it seems that way uh, because Jason uh, was up uh, three <coughs> games uh, to zero. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Mark Ray make a short comeback, getting two frames. And at 6-4, uh, as you said... Uh, Jason has the first chance to sink the nine. He missed it, but uh, Mark Gray didn't do much. And it's 7-4 now. Hmm. Yeah. 
And if, if I think it could have been good for the match if Mark Gray could actually have taken that last nine ball because then we would have had a chance, you know, hit hill hill. It's still possible, but it would have been qu pretty tight, you know. Safety. Mm, yeah, That's kind of. Good. It's pretty good. I don't think there's any problems in maybe taking a thin hit on it. Let's check on the lateral. Side view. Oh, it looks like the seven is covering completely. It must be because he's got that funny stick in his hand. <coughs> Jump bank. <laughs> is he crazy now? I don't know if he Let's passes uh, beside that I think it four. Does. I think it does. Oh, oh my god. Glad it wasn't commentator's curse. Oh my god. It was commentator's blessing. Oh my god, what a shot. Mile two, Shane van Boning Whoa. will win this tournament. Let's uh, see. There's still a lot that can happen. A lot. So I think we don't have no more interruptions when we're switching to the main camera. No, they fixed it. They yeah. came in just before I had to go out for the food and they said, yeah, it should be no problem. And it's no problem. So when you go to section A, for instance, it doesn't happen anymore? Yeah, yeah. Nice. A little thick on that bank, but it went in. And he's pretty okay on the three. He can stretch. Well, people are uh, giving thumbs up for that uh, jump shed, bank shed Oh, that was shot. a good shot. <laughs> it was an awesome shot. Awesome shot from Mark Gray. And he tries to put up a fight. I think he's straight enough on the four so he can go down for the six, do you think? Into the left center with the six? Well, um, he can roll the cue ball with uh, some follow. Yeah. For playing the six in the side pocket. Yeah, it definitely looks straight enough. And that's uh, a yeah, great shot. that's what he did. Perfect. Hello to Augustin Viziru. Um, is there any updates no. score-wise? Oh. No, because nobody is running around. Came and told us no. nothing. <laughs> maybe the Austrian guy could be lured into doing it, but I also think maybe Rico could do it. He's here. Uh, uh, he, he's still finishing his food. No, I, I say Andres oh, is, is uh, next to us, but he's some has some job. No. Okay. It's here. Ah, okay. It's here, here. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> he's recording the stuff for... Mm -hmm. uh, and 7-5, Mark Gray pulls one back. Yeah, he's recording the stuff for Austrian TV. That's correct. Wow. It's not bad. Flips the scoreboard, 7-5. Seven, 7-5. Five. Seven, five. Tell you what, though, since I've missed so much of the match, I can miss a little bit more. Go, and I will go. go and check the scores. You give us some thumbs up. Go so and uh, you can text me if you want to stretch you your exactly legs around the arena. I'll stay for the rest of the match. Yeah. Don't Eklund, worry. Of course, beat Ralph 10 7. 10 8. It was 10 8. Okay. Yeah. Right yep. Yes, Tobias Hoyes. He's walking that past around the Section A to find out the scores. And uh, he will be back with the updates. I know you are eager to find out the scores. Yabba dabba do. Dabba dabba do. So, guys, don't forget uh, that you are watching Mets Bucharest Open, the fourth edition live from the biggest and beautiful the most beautiful club in uh, Europe and why not in the world IDM club 42 tables available for pool we are playing this tournament on 32 of them new cloth for this event Ivan Simonis 8th 
6-0 tournament blue. And of course, uh, a lot of people watching, not only on the stream, but live here in the arena. We have beautiful stands around the TV table. The people are excited to see the matches. I'm excited to be with you. It's the third year that I'm here in the booth hosting this event and uh, hoping that you are enjoying the tournament. And don't forget guys, sharing is caring. We had a peak of over 1,500 uh, viewers when uh, Shane and uh, Zielinski was battling in the hill hill frame. And now we're gonna pass uh, 800 viewers mark. Don't forget, it's a race to 10. It's a race to 10. Race to 10. First chance, uh, I think, uh, is for Jason Shaw. But who knows, maybe Mark Gray is uh, able to make a comeback. Could be nice. And speaking about comebacks, Daniel Candy, no, he passed the booth. <laughs> And I hope he will come and tell me the updates for the other quarterfinals. I can tell you that on table one, it's playing Jalurakis with Eklund Kachi. And let me show you something. Something. This is sector A. It's 1 0 for somebody. I don't know if. Is Jalurakis leading or Eklund? And uh, the score for table A4, where Wojtek is playing Konyar, is 3 1, but I don't know for who. I think uh, we will have uh, soon updates. And I will tell you exactly. Exactly. After this match is over, uh, we will stay on the section A until we have another available semi final. First to 10, race to 10, there is a race to 10. Thank you for your love and your, for your hearts. Thank you guys, you're so kind. Don't stop doing that. Just hit the emoji buttons, thumbs up or love or ha ha, or angry or ha ha, or again ha ha. Daniel Todorov, I will announce the scores for the other matches as soon as I will have confirmation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. And don't forget, as long as you are uh, clicking on uh, heart or haha, you can click also on share button. Marian Postolake, I cannot change the graphic. I cannot change the graphic. That's what was introduced in the system before the tournament. So uh, it's not in my hands. But come on, it's a race to 10. Can you keep that, that in mind, guys? A race to 10. 10, 1, 0. 10 after 9 and before 11. That's 10. I know Tero Hilpi then. <laughs> Thank you, Tero. NJ pool player, shut up. Shut up, NJ pool player. <laughs> Carla Verge, Mario He is in the house in IDM Club. Joshua Filler uh, watching. 
Hi, Joshy. Can you press uh, six for Margaret, please? Oh, That's thank God. We're yeah. having a closer match. That's nice. Thank you, Jose Oliveira. And uh, let me tell you, I have news for you. Yes. Daniel Candy. Have I got some news for you. So tell us. Tell us. Tell us the scores from the other quarterfinals. And yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, there's still the mistake about the race to 9 or 10. It is still race to 10. It's just because the graphics is saying 9. Don't worry about it. Good break here. Even with the 9 flying, corner ball and the Tell ball us the is... scores. Okay, okay. The scores, Daniel. Shut the up. scores. Shut up then. Okay. Shut up. Konya, 3-1 up. So, let me show you this section A. So, yeah. Konyar is playing at A4 yeah. on the right, and you see on A3 there are two scoreboards. It's showing 1 3, so it's 3 1 4. And it's about to Konyar. be. Yes, and it's about to be 2 0 to Damianos, the jump master, on A1. So, Damianos is uh, on the right, on yes. the left on the scoreboard, as you can see here. So it's going to be 2-0 probably for Jal Rakis. Yeah. And unfortunately for the Americans, you can do all the anchor face emojis you oh want on the God. stream. Oh, my God. Get ready. I'm sorry to say oh that he is 7-3 down. If oh, it, my God. That's when I left. So if he won the last rack, it's 7-4. You guys will remember. Well, you can't. Oh you wouldn't have seen God. it because you didn't show them. Uh, so if he won that rack, Shane, then it's 7-4. Oh. If you lost rack, it's 8-3. So that Sorry cold war between that. Russia and USA is about to be won by the Fedor Gors guy. Cold war again, eh? Yeah, and I have to tell you, uh, as you are commenting with uh, Rico Dix here, yeah, I was uh, next to the main arena watching Shane. Yeah. And, uh, oh, look at all the angry smileys. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Somebody asked me, uh, who do you think will win the tournament? And uh, I said, Fedor Gorst. Mm. Not knowing that he will face Shane in the, semi in the quarterfinals. But mm. I believe that he has a good chance if he is passing Shane. Wow. I will say the small mistakes that we see from Shaw from time to time. They will be cut down to an absolute minimum, and I think that Shaw is going to win. Well, that's don't my forget, prediction. Eklund is still in the game. I know. So it's basically Wojtek Shevchek, the I holding, know. the defending champion, is still in the race. Yeah, but but. Uh, oh my yeah. God. So actually, what was the result with uh, the? Fein match. I never saw that actually. Uh, Fedor won 10 to 5. Okay, so that was pretty impressive. So, can you change please uh, the score? We have uh, Jason Shaw on the hill. And. Oh. Yeah, let me put him on there. Yeah. Okay, so time for the ex snooker player who then switched to pool, American pool, to um, have a good break here. Needs a five to go into the right corner pocket. That happens, and he has three points, the three ball, and the one is over the line. And he's got a good shot on the one, although it is quite far. It just passes the seven. And it's a natural to follow it down to the two. I'll just give you the side view so you can see. Follow through on this one, pot the one, go forward to the two. Hopefully be straight in on that one so he can 
or straightish on it. He's uh, okay on this one. Got a good angle to go back. But yeah, just removing the turtle rack for comfort. Remove the rack. <laughs> Don't leave your turtle rack on the table. Hmm. Right. Uh, and he's played probably the worst positional shot I've seen him play the whole tournament. And even worse, of course, he's missed the two. He jawed it. Meanwhile, makes this backspin shot look incredibly easy. So yeah, too many mistakes from uh, Mark Ray, it seems. Let me just go and take a look at the Shane table again whether or not it is updated. Or maybe Cyprian is doing that right now, but uh, winning ball for this guy to get into the last four. Yeah, <laughs> all smiles, they know each other well. Um, I don't know what they're discussing. What are they discussing? What happens? <laughs> it happens that Fedor Gorst is leading 8 to 4. Ew. So this is over or not? Uh, it is over. It is over. Yeah, they Jason came to shot. shake hands and then they, mm. they, you know, they started talking about probably one of the shots that happened in the match that I didn't see. <laughs> 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 oh, they're, they're joking and laughing. It's fun. It's cool. They're good buddies. So, yeah, 10 6, and congratulations to the score. Gone through to the last four. So, let's, um, let's try and see if we can actually get the audio. Does the audio work in Sector A? Do you know anything about uh, it? I don't know, but uh, I should leave it this yeah, way let's because just leave it. Uh, it's very crowded there. Yeah. And uh, maybe we we'll Oh, get too much. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Yeah. So, on A02, Fedor Gorst is leading 8 4 against uh, Shane Van Bunning. On A4, Konyar is shooting and he is leading 3 2 against Chef Czech. Did you see the score on Boning in this one? Yes, it's 8 4 for eight four. Fedor. And Damianos uh, is leading 2 0, and uh, he has a great chance of. Uh, Going three games up if he avoids the side pocket, and he did. And Gorst, wow. And it was Konya still up. No, now it's 4 2 to Konya then. Four yeah, Konya. All right, let me update that. So Konya gets to 4. And you guys can go and check out the live scores if you want. If you can't see them here, but it should be very clear. And 2 0 for Damianos, it was, yeah. Yes, and uh, it's about to be three games up, Damianos, yeah. so. I'm not clicking Ooh, the green button until. Dip, 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 dip. 3 0 for Damianos Boom. Jalurakis against Eklund Kachi. Why is he changing them now? And guys, as uh, Jason Shaw defeated Mark Ray. Yeah. Jason Shaw is the first semi-finalist. Uh, he will have to play the winner of the match, Jalurakis and uh, Kachi. Yeah. You know what? It went as expected, to be honest. I think it, I, I was saying along the lines of 10-7, but yeah, 10-6 is pretty close uh, to what I was thinking. Oh, jump here from Shane. Let's see. 
He's gone full out for that one. Is he gonna get saved by mm, the eight? No, nope. I don't think so. And maybe the three. Mm, I don't know if he goes on the right to uh, down. Pocket. I think I think the four ball is uh, yeah, is, is covering it. So maybe he can cut it down into our bottom left. Yeah. That is a possibility. So what's going to be for uh, Fedor? I think it's the pot into no safety. Yeah, he's oh what a gap! Wow, no, he's. But you know his, what? I, yeah. I, I okay, it's not potable as such, but there is a bank shot on if there he feels is a bank like shot it. And, uh, but also a thin safety where he can get the cue wall down behind one of those four balls. It's like a wall of balls. Yeah. So the area is so huge to actually lay a really telling safety or snooker. And. Uh, there might be a situation uh, table one mm -hmm. Jalrakis. Maybe we can switch there. Oh yeah, A one. Uh, yeah, on A one. Oh yeah, just making sure. Well, we will see if the nine moves. It no problems. But no reward for uh, nah. let's Damianos. Let's go back on section A so we can have. Oh, he went for the bank. It looks. He went for the bank. He leaves a shot for Fedor. I think now yeah. Fedor has a shot. Uh, he will have to follow or to stop if he can. I don't know if he can draw. Wow. Wow. Difficult what a shot position. If he has to go yeah. and do that. Thank you, Kaylin Wyckoff. It's a great venue here in uh, IDM Club in Bucharest. I have to say it's one of the best pool halls I've been to in here in Europe. So, yeah, if you're ever around the area or even if you're nice enough to take a detour with a plane, <laughs> come here because the pool but hall... But not hijacking a plane to nope. come here. <laughs> nope, don't do that. That don't will be that. getting you on the FAA no-fly list and you don't want to be there. But this, this pool hall is awesome. It has everything you want. It's got a gym. It's got a swimming pool. It's got bowling, table tennis, restaurants. I think the only thing they ex probably extra need is like a, a, a masseuse if you have like sore muscles or something. I think they have everything else. Yeah. Just about. I am actually quite sore in the neck. So uh, if you know anyone, <laughs> pretty good pot here. The three went in. Yep. And he's on the four or the five. Okay, you actually can't see which color it is, can you? Mm -hmm. Can you see it's a four or five? I have to tell you, Daniel, you're right. It's, it's pretty tough on this angle. Or a five. <laughs> pretty I tough on this angle. I think it's a pink ball. So yeah. if it's pink, it's the four yields. Yes. But yeah. Let's see this exit uh, for the seven. Should be an easy one. No, uh, it's come a bit far on this one. Far. So far, yes. Well. Um, I say pot this with backspin, low left. Low left, yeah. And then go around in the two cushions, short and side. It shouldn't be difficult for no nope. player like him. Nah, he's a shot maker. He's one of the best ones in Russia. I think some of the, you know, he's part of the team called the Billiard Brothers, and they do some yeah. amazing 
amazing amazing videos with like practice routines and oh they are monsters they're monsters like some of this the exercises they did you know i tried <laughs> i tried a couple of them i'm like two or three tries i give up i can't do it <laughs> i'm not good enough oh low left low left low left looks good for uh for a heel situation soon yeah and it looks like he's got the perfect angle as well t dung lee shane van burning is trailing Four games to eight. So eight this games guy, to four, actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fedor uh, is now at the table, having a chance to go uh, on the oh, hill, and perfect. he Look will be on the fee on the hill. He's not gonna miss that nine. I know it's it's it says commentators curse, but he can't miss that. He can't. Good. He didn't. Fedor Gorst on the hill with uh, Shane, 9-4 hmm. for Fedor Gorst. As Nurse I told you, uh, Shane had problems today with the young guns. Hill hill matches with Oliver Solnoki mm. and Viktor Zielinski. I, I predict that third time unlucky, not lucky. <laughs> well, yeah. But let's see, you know, I mean, these young guys, they can crack under pressure, but I, I just I just think the practice regime it's that that Gorst has. I think it's hard. Yeah, he's not. Next, I uh, just don't see it coming. I see that finally the luck has run out. Six but, uh, frames not to. But who knows? Chance, look, yeah. oh, look at that monster break though. Oh. <laughs> four balls down. Well, and the shot for the four, who is on the side, I think. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Oh, Jalurakis missed the shot, mm. but I don't know if he leaves anything. Let's see yeah. one. No. Wow. He snookered uh, Eklund. Yeah. Yeah. So as I told you, a nice and easy shot at the side pocket for uh, Shane. No, nothing different. Yeah. For Diamond Dallas, you are correct. You know, at some point when you have these long matches, you know, you're going to run out of you know, of steam in such a way that he's had to play. So, um, but so far, you know, he's, he's looking set to making, you know, a little bit of a comeback. Oh, and here, let's take a look at this shot. Excellent, yeah. With, uh, Eyeing up this little rail first, this little goody here. It's not completely simple this one because it is a little bit off the cushion, so the aiming point is suddenly a little bit different. Alex Lely so rightly says, and I'm gonna thumbs up that thing if I can actually click on it. Yep, thumbs up. Gorst has worked his ass off for the last five years, and I would not disagree ever. Oh, what a shot there from uh, Mr. Kachi. It's yeah. turned out okay, I mean, he's got a shot on the six. He's got a shot. Just go up on uh, section A again, as we see. Shane. Uh, yeah, he pulled one back. That, and it's eight uh, five, I think. Yeah. And uh, chef check uh, pull one back. It's uh, four three for Konyar. Let me just put so that on the score. Eight five. Yes. Four. No. What? Up. What? Uh, How much? Three. Yes. No. It's three. All right. Yes, four for Konyar. Okay. And this computer is slow. It's because they changed the uh, race to 10. That's why it reset. Yeah. So four, three to Konya. Yes, the Gorst uh, is uh, eight, five. Yeah, let me just click that as long as the laptop allows me to. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows for how long? Oh, come on. Ba -ba ba -ba there we have it. Da -da -da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And what was the da -dum. score still there? 3 0? Yeah. All right. 3 0. So that good little uh, rail first looks like it's going to give Catchy a wreck on the scoreboard finally. Who knows? Who knows? God oh, knows. Oh, wobbled in sick. Yeah. Let's see Fedor Gorst. Uh, Breaking for the match. Come on, lad. Do it. Q 
Corner ball, middle pocket ball. Another ball. Two ball down. He has a shot. I think it's that was the two that got kicked in, right? Yes. So he has a shot for the four. Four, five, six, eight, it's seven, easy nine. Easy display here. Wow. Easy display. Uh, if there's a cry smiley on this one, I don't know because I haven't checked. The Americans, you might as well try and use that button if it is. And uh, the Russian guys, you should give thumbs up for Fedor. Or, or if they're evil, they could use the laughing smiley. That <laughs> one is in there. I saw. The ha ha. Fedor hmm. Gorst. So yeah, Gorst was on nine, right? Was it eight five or nine five? It's nine five. Yeah, let me just update the scoreboard because. And uh, catch you one frame, please. Oh yeah, of <laughs> course. He gets one. Oh, what a love! A lot of love. Oh, the cry smiley is there. Uh, yeah, I see it. Oh. So uh, Fedor. NJ. I think this is uh, the problematic shot or the most difficult yeah. on this table because he has to get the... Uh, he has to avoid the nine. He is he playing to topspin? Nope, no, he didn't dare it. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, perfect That's position. Fine. He has yeah. also a possibility to uh, go with the rail after mm. kicking the six. I think a Russian or two is actually turning We're up here on Russian the stream. We're having Russian on the stream. Mama Russia. Your guy Mama is... Russia. <laughs> Mama Russia. I think your guy is finally going to do Fedor it here. Fedor Gorst will say Das Vidania to Shane. Just about. Just about. First place uh, is 4,000 euro. Euro. Yes, the Russians are liking it. Mr. Lotfi. No, the European no, eight ball yeah. champion from Denmark tuning in here on the stream to see the last three balls of Fedogorst knocking out possibly knocking out the Moscone champion Shane Fabonin. so close and just like the Dutch commentator and pool player legend Alex Lilly said before just on a few seconds ago although the eight ball wobbled in so, uh, so, he says so. he says that Fedor Gorst has worked his ass off for th five or six years and you know what he's finally done it it's a wrap he's finally made it third time unlucky for a fatigued American Shane Van Boning he wins by a whopping 10-5. Fedor Gorst into the semi. In the semifinals. And he was the one to meet who? Wow. He will play the winner of the match, Konyar Shevchek. Hmm. So we do not have uh, any uh, semi final available because um, they are still playing. Yeah. So we switch over to Eklund and Damianos to finish that one off so the russians send some love and even the americans you gotta you gotta hand it to the kid send a couple of love smileys because diamond he's dollars played his it. ass off diamond dollars dug it the next match on the stream will be one of the semi-finals depends uh, what semi-final will be uh, completed because we only have uh, only one semi-finalist in each semi-final two quarterfinals are still playing but yeah what an entertaining ending for that match it looked like he could have had a little bit of a chance because the eight ball wobbled three four times just before dropping but yeah. uh but it went but yeah how important is that miss going to be? Is it going to be Kachi turning this match around? So far, that's a great pot on the one. It's a bit far on the two. He's too far on the two. It's now snookered. It also looked like he potted the one ball into the thin side of the pocket. So the cue ball had to run a little bit shorter than this. Yeah. That's a that's a sticky situation. Sticky situation. 
ja. Hier, pier, pier. Glad to see you guys still tuning in, even though that we just had Shane go out of the tournament. This amazing match between the jump master Damianos, which you will probably know from all the Facebook videos and YouTube videos, is trying to stay in front, although he's made a mess of this. Has to do a very accurate jump, and this is what he's known for. So we might see something magical here now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We could. Why not? Oh, yeah, Dimitros. 2-9 jump combo. You are crazy if he gets that. Oh. Are you saying 9 ball into the center pocket, basically? He is. Um... Oh, my God. He's actually eyeing this up. His look. It looks like it. <laughs> my God, he's crazy. Well, at least he may try it. What a shot this is if he pulls it off. Damianos Jalorakis. Wow. With uh, a jump shot. Let's see. No, it was a jump save. He barely caught the two. That must have been the jump save he went for. That's a yeah. good shot. Like... Okay, there's a gap for the two, but uh, again, you know, he, he's keeping Eklund under pressure. He's leaving so much distance every time. And that was just a pre-stroke th thing here from Kachi. He would never go down that quickly, of course. He's very measured. Checks out the table, walks around it three, four times just to make sure everything is going according to plan. An NJ pool player mentioning about they're talking about the juniors coming ahead, you know, coming through in, in the States. They're starting to have some junior programs for pool, which is really nice. So uh, hope you guys. Yeah. So hope you guys uh, get that off and running, get a lot more interest in the game from your uh, juniors. I tell you what, it would be better than American football because there is no brain damage from shooting pool, unless you get hit in the head by a pool ball, of course. But uh, so Eklund, for the first time, I think plays a dodgy safety shot. I haven't seen him play that bad a safety shot uh, in a while. I think, as we can see, that there is a gap between the nine and the eight. But position from two to the four is a little bit shaky. He's obviously looking at something else because the position is not given. Or is he going for the pot? And yes, my co-commentator is just taking a comfort break. Oh, what a gap. That was a perfect gap. I didn't think he could avoid the nine. Back in perfect position. I don't know whether or not this is going to be same kind of case for uh, Eklenkachi because he's been behind a couple of times too, a bit like Shane. Could be that he's also a little bit fatigued sometimes you know these matches where he runs away with it you know those are the kinds of matches that conserves energy for the later rounds but a lot of the matches have been very long so who knows Vlad bye to you wow good thumping shot here Damianos, make sure to get decently on the seven. So yeah, since Shane has gone out, who is your guy's 
favorite, basically. Do you have any still left in the tournament? Mine for sure is Jason Shaw. Been impressive all the way through. Just taking his time here. Settling himself. Uh, yeah, okay, he felt that it would be easy enough to leave the nine and it worked out perfectly. It is 4-1 down to Eklund Kachi. Damiano is really turning the screws here. Dimitri, Fedor and Damianos. Yeah. Um, Jason Caudill, I would say that Filler is probably warming up for the US Open, but I could be wrong. If anybody of the Germans uh, have some info on him, let me know. Is he on a training camp, boot camp, or whatever, something? I don't know. Eklund about to break here, though. Great break. But he needs to get a roll here, and he hasn't had it. He's frustrated. Totally understandable. That is a rotten bit of luck. Looked to be the perfect break. Three balls down, so he knows whatever happens here. If he doesn't cover the three, it's probably going to be end of rack again. But uh, a good kick is possible here. He could leave the cue ball behind the six. But yeah, needs to be absolutely spot on. Or he's aiming on the other side, so what is he doing? So yeah, if you go to the bracket system on 9ball.ro forward slash matches, you can see that the match called A489, the match between Damianos and Eklund Kachi, the winner of that will go over to Jason Shaw in that semifinal. And of course, the winner of A491, which will be either Jakob Konia or Wojciech Czechuk, Chefchuk, I should say, will go to the other semifinal, waiting the 492, and the 492 is either Fedogorst or Shane van Boning, and that was of course Fedogorst. So we need to find an opponent for Mr. Gorst from Russia. Oh, thanks for the insight, Filler, preparing for the Whirlpool Masters. A lot more money in that one, of course, because it's a TV tournament run by Mr. Barry Hearn and the Matchroom Sports. So yeah, totally understandable to go on like a boot camp for that. Mr. Bogdan, yes. welcome in the house. But you have four balls here for Damianos. The luck is not really with Eklankachi in this one. That was a rotten bit of luck on the break. Good clean pot on the six and perfect ish. I should say, I thought it was gonna roll a little bit more to the right side, so he was not as straight, but he's so straight on it that I think he can draw back for the eights, unless he feels he can thin the pocket. 
and thereby go over to the left side. Yeah, he's pushed it a little bit. That should be okay. Natural angle for going around in two cushions and landing pretty good on the nine. Perfect there. He's really moving ahead. Gonna be a four game lead. Unless he does an Edmond. Nope, it's in. 5 1. Not really the script that Kachi was hoping for. So, has one of the players called a timeout? I guess they have, one of them. So let's just take a look at this one. Yeah, it's probably Eklund that's left the table. Damianos is sitting comfortably and warmly in that chair. Not having a care or worry in the world. Take the headphones on so I can hear what Mr. Braga is saying. Harry Eidner, I'm so sorry to tell you that Shane unfortunately ran out of luck. He's been up against three youngsters in these last three matches and honestly to win 10-9, 10-9 and then having to do it all again from behind, it was just too much to ask. In the end, it ended up being 10-5, I think it was, victory for Fedogorst from Russia. So Shane unfortunately for you guys is out, but there's still great pool to be had semi-final between Jason Shaw and um, the winner of this match, Demianos and Kachi and the other semi-final standing between Fedor Gorst and uh, the winner of Jakob Konier and Wojciech Cevchuk. So, uh, great pool still to be had. But yeah, commiserations to the Americans. He put up a good fight. Kerim Krasnicki. I like her playing style too. I think the fact that she plays a bit like a man, you know, with the, the masculine stance and, you know, the angry face, it kind of makes for an intimidating player in her. I remember losing 100 against 24 against her in the European Championships for teams, I think it was. I reckon that's the only way I could have actually played her. It must have been the teams, and she was on that one. And uh, yeah, I didn't really get too many chances. She kind of steamrolled at me in straight pool. The first semi-final is set to start at four o'clock, which is just about now so since these matches are slow I can't tell you when that is going to happen I think the only fair thing is that uh, the guys get about 10-15 minutes after these long grueling matches and then you know get to have a little bit of a bite of snack or something so that's the quality of the first semi-final is not going to be complete rubbish and uh, this mean or means I should say probably brings the starting time of the next match to at least five o'clock about an hour delayed a lot of tactic play 
tactical play in this uh, in this tournament. So this is why we're probably rolling a little bit behind schedule. Kathleen Black Widow is amazing as well. And of course, Jen Beretta is not half bad herself. I've actually played her. Um, I think I beat her 7-5 or something in a small mess tournament in New York back in 2013. 2012, 13, I can't remember, but uh, yeah, nice girl. Nice woman, I should say. She's not a girl anymore. Proper player as well. Dimitris, the pocket size, about three and a quarter, 11 centimeters, but not parallelly shaved. Um, typically, the Cold Crown Four tables are shaved near parallel, but not completely. But in actual fact, the pockets on the Gold Crown 5, which is the TV table, are even less parallel cut on the jaws of the cushions. So this means that the balls could actually wobble a bit more here on the TV table. And I felt that by trying to play on the table two nights ago. And uh, yeah, it plays amazing. But yeah, you've got to be accurate. So it's a lovely table to play on. Kaylin. Jeanette is definitely, um, you know, she's not one to, to, to go away from a conversation. I, I also had a little bit of a chat with her and she was really friendly, you know, telling a little bit of, about, you know, what the scene is like over there in the States, how you guys play. And, how, what the state of the sport was, I think we talked a little bit about. So yeah, super, super great company. Robert Nadella, I'm so sorry to tell you, I think uh, Ladani was the last one to go out and I think that was in the last 16, either that or last 32, I'm quite sure. So yeah, unfortunately this year, no one in the quarters. And here it looks like a drive, Whoa! What was that? Was that the one? Let's go back. F for a second, I thought that was the nine. Sorry, the reaction, but I thought he had the nine. It wasn't. And as you can see, the six and the four just inside the kitchen, meaning that he's going to continue what looked to be coming a dry break. Just about made it. So this once again means, you know, the rolls are on Damianus' side because the hammering break that we saw from Ekman just before basically yielded nothing but a bad kiss on, this, on the three. And it ended up being another rack to Damianos and it now looks like being 6-1. There's not really a lot that Ekman can do. So this is good news for the Greeks. Send us some thumbs up and smileys and happy faces. Carry Janet Lee is awesome isn't she the one that was used as a figure in virtual pool 3 for the pc game i'm quite sure i seem to remember that i used to play that a lot on pc kaylin kachi has been fighting quite a lot in this tournament um i think a little bit like uh, nils fein those two had to fight a little bit harder than some of the others. Not really firing all cylinders. Niels especially had trouble coming from behind quite a few times. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just don't have the energy to last the whole tournament. Vegelis or Vagelis. Stefano Pistam, uh, I'll try to say her name again. Stefano Polos. Stefan, how do you, where do you put the pressure on that name? I don't know. Stefanopoulos, must that be the correct way? Chris Stearns. Yeah, I'm sorry to say to you, Shane Faboni is out. He just lost to Fedogors 10 5. So he's not in the semifinals, sorry to say.
Jeremy Bird, welcome back. And Diamond Dallas, yep. No Shane on the TV table anymore in this one. Stephanopoulos, yeah. It was virtual pool three with Janet Lee. Needless to say, when we played that game, you know what happened? We always lost to her in the final. There was nothing we could do. And you see on the table here, there's just there's just nothing going for Eklund because he's played another brilliant safety here, Damianos. Yeah, it's happened to the table. So you see, he's classy still. He appreciates the fact that he's being outplayed by this Greek. Sometimes there's just there's just not anything you can do about getting no rolls. Chris Stearns, yeah, you guys have been watching Fedogorist travel to the States to live the American dream, basically. Make a lot of money and make a lot of Americans sad, angry, or frustrated by taking their pocket money, or bigger amounts in pocket money, I should say, both in money games and in impressive tournament play. Two Christian escape here. Let's see what happens. Nope. Slides a bit too much. And he was obviously a little bit f afraid to, you know, hit the nine. So. Yeah, so that gives ball in hand for Damianos. <sighs> Kachi. Right now, he couldn't get a roll if he went into a bakery. James Odom, yes, of course, there's money to players even down in the last 48, I think. So he's still getting a little bit of money home with him. Not completely screwed. First price is 4,000 euro. Must be about 4,300 American dollars or 4,400, something like that. Second place is 2,000 euros. Semi-final, 1,000 euros. And a quarter is probably is like 750 or 500, so not completely empty handed. <laughs> Darth Fedor. You're getting a like for that one, Freddy. Lewis, nope, Kachi is playing with an old 314-2. I got to try it, and uh, it's a nice queue. Uh, different stability compar compared to regular queues, obviously, because it's quite a lot longer. He has some homemade stuff onto the queue in terms of like wrapping and stuff. So he's actually not using the linen grip there. He's got some sort of like rubber on, on the butt piece. And uh, yeah old and slightly worn almost darkened 314 two shaft and there you see Eklund given a nine he's just about had enough especially in this rack six one to the Greek so the Greeks need to tune in I uh, I think they should be very happy with this situation, having someone of theirs into the semifinals. Meanwhile, the fight is still going with uh, Ojek Shevchuk and Jakob Konya. 6-5 to Shevchuk, you can see he just flipped the board there. So he's fighting back, he was 4-3 down.
So let's see how Wojciech does this break. Mm. One stays on the table. Was it three points? Yeah, it was. Gentlemen's game this. Jakub Konia knows that Shevchuk is about to take the shot on the one, so he stood up from the chair and took the other one. Great to see. So that could be a close call. Hard to call a winner. Jakub Konia for me is also one of the players that have been growing uh, in the sense that, you know, he was getting more consistently to quarters and semis and then winning tournaments, but there, uncharacteristically thin cut and a miss on the one for Wojciech Shevchuk. Yeah, so this definitely gives a chance for Jakob to come back on level terms with 6-6. Six, six. Andre Popa on the stream, you're saying Damianos plays like a machine, like he trusts every shot to go in. Zero doubt. At the moment, it basically looks like that. But uh, it looks like uh, Eklund has got something to say about it, at least in this rack. Close to a 6-2. Luis Gabriel, yep. The shaft definitely looks like it's one of his favorites. Thin the seven in to get nicely on the eight, but as ro luck will have it, he's nearly straight on the eight. So let's see if he can do some magic on that one. Let's just tune over to the A1 camera. Yeah, it looks just about straight. Can he do this with bottom left? Is there enough angle? Ah. Uh, yeah, it was always going to be a tough sh tough ask on that particular shot. Needs a good nine here. Could this be a little bit of irritation pool? Because normally we don't see him shoot the nine that quickly. He went down straight away, sort of like to get it out of his system. He's potted it cleanly and it's a reducement to 6-2. Tell you what, if he starts to come back here, it would be crazy. Rodos Gris is here. Antonis Mochonas, or Moschonas, if I say it correctly, welcome on the stream. I guess you will be very happy to see Damianos in front by 6-2. Eklund might be coming back slowly yet. Yeah, let's see. So Jakob Kony had to break. Let's see what happens there. And he did get to 6-6. Six, six. As you can see on the scoreboard, on A3, they put the scoreboards so you guys can see it. I'm going to be going back and forth between the Eklund Kachi table and this full view of the room. Mm-hmm.
Molina, yeah, it certainly looks like Russia versus Scotland. Earl is the GOAT? Really? For now, they said the same thing about Stephen Hendry and then somebody more awesome came along. His name was Ronnie O'Sullivan and he's still going strong 25 years into his career. A lot longer than the compact career that we saw with Stephen Hendry. Meanwhile, pretty good attempt at a safety here. I'm not sure if it's completely covered. Mostly. But yeah, the more awesome person that's come around on the scene to me is Jason Shaw. And I, I wonder whether or not that we can say the same comparison that Stephen Hedy was the best and then Ronnie came. Maybe soon we can say that Jason Shaw could be the best. But uh, what do you guys think on the stream? Any of the Chinese also could be deemed that? There are a couple of uh, Asian players that you could also call best. Obviously, Efren is in his own right the best in my book. But uh, we could have a guy like Shaw maybe overtaking the opinion in 30 years' time. Dimitris Feeler is up there, in my opinion, in about 20 or 30 years for sure. Already a good contender for being one of the best ever. Certainly not in temperament, but uh, in entertainment and the fact that he's won the world title at such a young age. And I don't think it's going to be his last world title. Ha! Messi. Come on. Call the Verge. That is so true. You know, the same thing is in snooker because you used to have about a handful of players that could really win tournaments. And if you see over a whole season now with about 20 odd tournaments, 12, 13 of them being ranking events, you have a new winner in almost every tournament in snooker. And that's even for a game that is not really run completely by luck. As they say, a tremendous amount of skill goes into it. And still, there's really only one player who keeps doing it. Well, this season, we probably have to say that Ronnie is up there. Neil is up there. Judd Trump is up there. And first half of the season, then you also had Mark Allen. So it's a little bit of a handful of players that have done well. But this is a, like an unexpected season for me. Because if you look in the past seasons, you would see 10 different people having a good time in different events. So a bit of an odd year, this one, because, yeah, it is turning into an era of too many great players for both pool and snooker, to be honest. Charlie Seba, yeah, the world ranking says it. So, for now, he is the greatest. What a final, though, against, uh, was it Carlo Beato? Crazy, crazy world final. How many of you guys saw that one? I wish we had a camera just a little bit closer to Jakob Konia and Wojciech Chefchuk. But unfortunately, we have to do with this particular overview. Wait a minute, I've just messed it up here. I think that it is Jakob Konia that is 7 6 up. Time will tell. Fedor on the stream. 
If that's uh, the case, congratulations. You were the only youngster to uh, get it right against the all-American hero, Shane Van Boning. Basically third time unlucky because two other matches was Hill Hill and Shane sort of prevailed. But you slayed him by a comfortable mar margin, I might add. So, congratulations for being in the semi-finals of the Mets Bucharest Open. Hello, Fedor. And hello to all the Russian pool fans. Are you tuned in? I hope you are. And at the very least, I hope you will be, because his match in the semis is going to be hella interesting. And yeah, don't worry, Fedor, I've also mentioned you guys for your YouTube and Facebook antics with the Billiard Brothers, the most amazing training regime channel you can find online, besides probably one or two others. Some of the exercises you guys can make and clear up are absolutely insane. And uh, it's the sort of practice regime you should have for any youngster wanting to make it in pool. I hope those exercises are some of those that could be taken and uh, completed by the American juniors so that we can have them up to scratch with the European continent sort of countries. So they could also be competing for future, ti future titles, I should say, here in the European countries. They need to come out and travel, get the experience. Just like the Russians going to the States, taking all their money and doing well in all the American tournaments. So yeah, shout out to you guys on the Billiard Brothers. Yes, you guys are working hard. Alex Lee was here on the stream about half an hour ago and he said, Fedor Gorst has worked his ass off for the last five years and uh, you can't get any more praise than that. So be proud, bro. James Odom, you're just about right. There's only, I think, two or three other players that can get me worked up in the same sort of way that he does. It's just awesome to see how he does it. And there you see Wojciech Shevchuk at the table. Nah, come on. What a mistake. He's seven six down and he scratches. Yeah, he must have been bridging tough over that ball. Bad run, mate. And let's go to check out the break. From Eklankachi. He really has to get something going here. He didn't have much luck the last time. The three was covered. Here the corner ball goes and the three points. And he's finally got a shot. Call the press. Finally got a shot. Could this be a little bit of a comeback mounting? Even though it's 7-2. Seven two, Elias. He's not really had much run, so if you just tune in, I can tell you that um, lack of uh, roll on the break, and um, just in general a few safety mistakes, looking a bit fatigued, a little bit tired, running out of steam. That has basically been the story for Eklankachi. NJ, you said it best. To all who support, promote, pool, for the love of it, please give back. Pay it forward. That's it. If you see a kid with potential talent, 
don't see him as a future rival see him as somebody who deserves to get the knowledge actually do see him as a future good rival but not in a way that you don't want to share your knowledge teach as much as you can definitely I'll start by saying go to the Billiard Brothers to watch their videos already from that you will learn a hell of a lot So let's see. Don't snooker yourself. I think that's the first roll we've seen them have for quite a while. Let's take a look. I don't think it's covered. I think you can just about see it. Please don't be snookered. Oh, that's a great shot. Having to stretch there and still manage to land just about plumb on the five. Yep, Autumn, like I told earlier, 314 2, a very old one. Worn out to bits, but he loves the shaft a little bit like you saw the old shaft from Dynamite Darren Appleton. He had one that was literally dark gray in the end as well, and that used to be nice and yellowy whitish. So, uh, yeah, if you love a shaft, just keep it as long as you can. And he's just, yeah, he's not happy. And I can understand why, because he's just overcooked this a little bit. A little bit too low on the cue ball. Could actually, because he seems to be overrunning those shots. It could be that they have a cue ball that's a little bit light. They are not weighted within one gram, just like the balls you see in snooker at the World Championships. Those are 1G Aramith balls. These are weighted within, I think, 3 to 4 grams. So these slight tendons tendencies to deviate could happen angry stroke on the seven quickly down and he played an amazing shot there to land nice on the eight and therefore we have him just about ready to reduce this to a seven three lead to damianos i think this is what we call pissed off pool because normally he would take about a minute or half a minute on that shot and he went down shot it in Hmm, yeah. NJ pool player with about 20 dings. I don't think that can do it. About 100. Doesn't matter. It probably makes it feel more like an ash snooker cue with all the dents and dimples in it. Charlie Ziba. Nope, he's back on 314.2. If he had the three, it's not that one because I saw the number. I tried it yesterday. Definitely said 314.2. Andre Pangia, yeah, I sort of think that you are right in terms of pool level. I wonder whether or not a guy like um, Damianos could do some damage about that or have something else to say about it. But for now, he's still dominating here in the match against Eklankachi. So what are you guys from Greece thinking about this? Are you enjoying it? Throw some hearts and likes. Your guys, 7-3 up against one of the best players in the world. Shishendo Fedor was the victor in that. 10-5 he beat Shane Verboning.
Great stream. Many thanks from Latin America. Well, thank you for tuning in, Louis. Hope you're enjoying the action here. As you know, we are a little bit delayed, all of you. It's about 10 minutes to a one hour delay. It is now 16.50 and about 50 minutes ago, we were supposed to start the first semi-final. But because these matches are turning into being tactical and hard fought, you would have to wait a little bit longer. Probably gonna be 5.30 now. It's not gonna hold up with a one hour delay. Oh, Damianos, are you testing your luck there? How many more times can you get a good kiss? Had that been full ball on a seven, I reckon we could have seen Mr. Kachi back on the table with a, a chance for seven four, I should say, but playing good at the moment. A little bit of a guest here in the studio again. The uh, kind friend of mine from Austria who let me loan his extra bed in his uh, little hacienda last night because I uh, had a friend who was uh, going to a techno party. Therefore, I couldn't get home on the couch that I was supposed to have. So uh, welcome back, Andreas. How are you enjoying the action here at the IDM Club? Yeah, uh, not too good. As for those who know me, I'm from Austria and yeah. our two top guns, Albin and Mario, are already out. Too Spoke bad, yeah. Yeah, I've spoken to them. So both very exciting matches today in the round of 32 mm. and then advanced to the last 16 by hill hill matches and then yeah mario was able to run with jason jason shaw until 4-4 and then he told me that uh, he he played a few bad position uh, positional shots and uh, also did not did not uh, have a, a very good safety game in this match and so mm. jason then ran away and easily won with 10 Racks to four, mm. and for Albin, yeah, he uh, he told me that he had a rack, which uh, then went at, uh, for the uh, intermediate result of two two for, uh, and it took fifty minutes. Mm. It was the balls were so uh, blocked. Uh, yeah. He told me one rack fifty minutes, so that's really crazy. I think so. Uh, I have never heard about the rack. Um, uh, lasting I 50 minutes did I'm you I'm, I'm inclined to say that he was overthinking stuff in that match because we were struggling here in the commentary booth uh, to know what to do so we were jumping back and forth on the different cameras um, he, he, he just overthought that a little bit but yeah you know the table was breaking a little bit difficult on that particular match so yeah but you know uh, we all know how strong he is and he's going to be back with a vengeance probably for the Whirlpool Masters or US Open possibly yeah, so he, uh, he will play the Whirlpool Masters next week in Gibraltar. Mm. Is there uh, a draw on this one yet? I think yes, we, we, we should look this up on, uh, on Matchroom. Uh, I th I'm not sure who he's playing. All right. You actually, you can open a tab over there and you yes, can go so to Matchroom and then let's here. check. Yeah, let's check. And uh, there's obviously no draw for the US Open yet, right? There isn't, no. No. Meanwhile, we have the Greek, a little bit out of position here. He needs to be careful that he doesn't scratch with the cue ball here because he could do that if he had hit it harder. So he's opted to make sure of the pot and therefore having to play the bank shot on the eight ball because he also didn't take too much care of where the seven dropped into the center pocket it means he's a little bit out of position for the bank so this needs to be accurate therefore he's opted to play the safety and this has been the situation just since you're just joining us now this has been the situation this in this match um so far damianus has not let catch in on any easy shots literally it's bit bit either clearing and running or making incredible safeties the whole match He's up 7-3, I see right now. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I wasn't expecting this, but he's played too. He's played so composed and he's re even he had a jump safety at some point where he had, okay. to, uh, he had to jump and then hit side cushion, side cushion and in behind the ball and he did it. Okay. But we all know he's the jump master anyways, Damianos. Yeah, I have seen some crazy oh. shots from him uh, uh, 
on YouTube and there, there are some really crazy things so this let's hope he can show yeah. some of his shots in the yeah, match now so far I, I swear in this match he's, he's, it's like he said okay I know I can do those shots on the YouTube channel great shot here we have to say from uh, from uh, Kachi a little bit pa fast paced but still it's a thin cut so just about the best you could do for there but yeah, um, it's like Damianus has basically said, okay, I can save the entertainment for my YouTube videos and, you know, just make sure that I get the victory that I'm supposed to get. Mm -hmm. So besides the jump safety with the uh, side cushion, side cushion and a safe, there hasn't really been any of that sort of spectacular play. It's just been solid pool, yeah, very well measured and not hurrying the shots, which is obviously a thing that both these players seem to be doing so it's it's a long slug like you can see there are actually four racks in front now five racks in front on the other as we this see. is a very big rack now here for him yeah. and also for uh, for Eklund uh, because yeah five racks down in a race to 10 that's quite a lot mm. coming back to the world pool masters yeah so I have the drama, but let's let's maybe before look at the shot here at the eight. Maybe he can cut it. Let's see. Overcut over it. Oh, nearly oh. flows the nine as well. But you see this. I, I okay. I didn't mention that to you. He's actually had quite a few rolls in this match as well. Yeah. Uh, Eklund had quite a few breaks where you think, okay, it's. You know the cue ball is about to come back to the center of the table looks nice mm -hmm. then the lowest numbered ball on the table got a kick or something like that from another ball and then it was snookered yeah this has happened at least two or three times and then in this rack i think damianus has bumped into three other balls so he's definitely getting the rub of the green at the moment yeah so sometimes it's just the way it goes you know what does kachi here do he will kick here now or yeah probably and Possibly into the center pocket, if it is. No, he goes for the full bank. Wow, great oh shot. Oh my God. Yes, yes. What this a is shot. A this is a game changer here. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The last two racks, he's been down when he's been annoyed with the situation. And he's shot it quite quickly. He's, he's turning up the pace now. Yeah. He knows that something needs to change. So, so he changes the rhythm then? Yeah, completely. Yeah. He was angry nice. a couple of times. He went out of position. He, he went out from, he potted a six and came too far forward for the seven. He was so angry. He just went down and thumped in the seven yeah. top spin and went around in two cushions. Perfect for the nine. Wow. So he's, he's finally changing. Um, so this could be important. I mean, eight, three, it's, you, you say probably it's gone, but seven, four, it's open. Yeah. Completely open. So Shevchuk. <coughs> Shevchuk is 8-7 up against Konya. Yeah. Jakub Konya, he, he he's playing in Austria by the way for mm. uh, for a Bundesliga team yeah. where he has played uh, last seasons, yes, for Wiener Neustadt. Very strong player. Would you say that he's one of the players that maybe four or five years ago you didn't really see him as a contender and now you, he's actually one of those that he has become very mature with his yeah. game so um i was watching him uh, in the austrian league yeah. i think three years ago yeah and there he was i wouldn't say shaky but uh, yeah in, in in one set maybe one mistake more than he now makes and this one mistake mm. can change can can win and can win you matches yeah, yeah especially exactly. at the international level yeah. shan nope shane is out he lost 10-5 to Fedogorst in the quarterfinals young russian beat him part of the billiard brothers and their training program so he two young guns were too much for shane then yeah so i call it third time unlucky jakob konya at the table as we were speaking about him Trying to make it eight all. Carol Hardy, or Carol Hardy, probably is. Hi back. Hope you're enjoying the stream. And uh, yeah, we have these two matches in the quarterfinals still battling it out. They are trying to find out who is going to meet 
Korst and Shaw. Yeah, back now to the World Pool Masters next weekend. So Albin will play Jeffrey Da Luna, and if he wins, then he will meet Joshua Filler. Was you're missing here at this big mm -hmm. event, so uh, he will be one of the main favorites for the Whirlpool Masters next week mm. in Gibraltar. I mean, that place seems to also be turning out some great tournaments because we just had the Gibraltar Open in snooker as well. Yes, and uh, it seems like they're they're finally you know it's probably one of the places where you could see players come from the future because uh, they will there will be some hopefuls in the crowd and they will see how amazing these players are both in pool and snooker and that could maybe grow a few homegrown talents have you been there Evan? ever no unfortunately i was supposed to go this year but uh, timing wise it just didn't work out because i had some uh, dj shows around the around the globe so i couldn't mm -hmm. but i promised myself i'm gonna clear a schedule for next year i want to go to Gibraltar open in snooker and possibly also you know go to see uh whirlpool masters if that becomes the same place for that one next year yeah mm -hmm. yeah we will see all right jakob konia mess q's player what are you gonna do are you gonna pot the nine are you gonna choke there's no choking no straight stroke wow wow we well so Eight. let's see oh let him touch the scoreboard so we can see. It is 8-8, eight, eight, so it is correct on the score sheet here. They could be going hill hill as well. And he now takes a break. Yeah. Although we are so delayed, they shouldn't really be allowed to. <laughs> An hour's delay and they're not done. We should have started the first semi-final at 4 o'clock. Mm. So, uh, tactics. A lot of tactical play. And even this rack, let's go back while he's taking a break. Let's take a look here. You see, oh, yes. a yeah. lot of the racks have been like this. Just mm -hmm. some things here and there, safety, you know, clutterness. So, so what do you think? Would it be better than to play winner's break here? or? Um, I know that some wouldn't like it. Um, it really depends. I think there's for and against it. I think when you are making this, you say a Moscone point giver, you know, so you get points in the Moscone race. Is that how it's done? Y yes. Yeah. yeah. This is a Moscone uh, yeah. cup event. Yeah, it yeah. Is. And we agree at the, the Moscone for the past few years, it's definitely been alternate breaks, right? Yeah. Then I'm of the opinion that it should stay alternate. So at, mm. at least when it's Moscone race, yeah. it has the same format, but that's just my opinion. Mm. But honestly, I love playing with winter breaks because I feel you deserve to get on a little bit of a run if it is, if you play good. Yes. And it's not always you get to do that unless you're, you know, your opponent is having a bad roll every mm. time they break and you get in still. So, but yeah, alternate break for me. Still 600 tune in and uh, glad to see you guys are still here. A lot of you are from the States, I know. Even though the chain is out, it's glad, I'm glad I should say, to see you guys appreciate the great pool that these guys are doing for you. Especially the fact that Damianos and Eklenkachi is playing a lot of greater safety shots for you guys. Not just jumping away, and I know the states love their safeties. Oh, I was about to say he might get a lucky kiss behind. Lucky kiss on the seven so that the one would go in, but instead... It's a safety, a snooker. So he's hit it good, but then again, you know, it's been going this way the whole match, basically, whenever they've had to play some safeties. Damianos has been able to get the rub there. But uh, nice to see that Eklenkachi is still, you know, praising the shots when he's behind. It shows great class, in my opinion. Well, this is a real problem he oh has yeah. now here right now because yeah what can he do here is it he has the one cushion escape yeah i think he, the aggressive solution is maybe where he you know yeah he tries to go for the pot but at the same time get the one ball away mm -hmm. and then obviously end up with uh, a possibility of snookering him cue ball could with the side spin if he uses that one here yeah he could maybe drift over behind a nine or the six depending on the contact 
Don't know if you agree, but that's what I'm seeing. I, I think he plays it without any English. Just tries to have a good hit on the wall. Brings it up the table. So let's see. Hmm. How Ivan here on the comments. Yeah, about 30 plus comments about Shane. Is he still playing? You guys, I'm sorry. He's out. 10-5, lost to Fedogorst. That's all I'm going to say about it. 9ball.ro forward slash matches if you want to see the results. Oh, wow. There that you was see. close. He got the cushion yes. first, which was, which was important to get the one ball away and the cue ball as well. That was a very nice shot. Yeah. I'm thinking the three is too close to the cushion, right? I don't think no, that the, I, yeah, the one doesn't pass. The, no. the, one, the one will not pass, no. Yeah. Could this finally be a situation where Damianos doesn't find a snooker for Eklenkachi mm. to come back to the table with? Or is he going to continue with this insane safety play? He's kicking on it now. Ah, okay. Yes. Mm. Maybe a bit too far. He can see the one definitely. So yeah. But then again, like I say, he keeps on not giving up a shot really. So the standard of safety in this one has just been ridiculously high from uh, Damianos' side. I think the only couple of safety mistakes have been from uh, Eklund. Mm -hmm. um, which was a bit surprising to me because I know that Eklund is very very good at that part of the game as well but yeah talking about safety so who for you is the best safety player here in this field so far what do you think let's say left in the tournament uh, overall all players overall that is so tough um I would like to say that Ralph is always the best at coming out of safeties, you know, reading the diamond system and yeah. sort of, you know, re-safing even when he snookered, stuff yeah. like this, going around mm -hmm. in two cushion and the cue ball just lands in a perfect position. He's probably still the best at it. But I saw a couple of times where Niels was just about to lose a match and he would end up, you know, gluing his opponent to a ball somewhere and there's just no chance of hitting it. So... Niels for me so is also... So really dead safeties. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's so rare to see a bad safety shot for, for Niels. At the very least, you're always snookered. And uh, most of the time, you're probably even glued to the ball that you don't want to be glued to. So while he's taking that decision, let's just quickly take a look on that table. I know you guys are saying stay with the Damianos match, but we need to also respect the fact that Jakob and Chefchuk are playing okay let's actually go back because there's a jump here this might be the youtube magic are you guys ready apparently damianos isn't still weighing up the options does that look like he wants to go just past the three and then jump and kick the like two two rails and then kick the one away i don't see a jump here really i, I no I, I... me neither but I, I can only imagine that's the, that's the line he's looking for. Just past the three and then try to kick it away. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, he sees jump shots that none of us would ever even think about. Yeah, but I think if he, if he uh, jumps really close to the three then, uh, uh, on, the, on the right side of the three, then he maybe will have a very thin hit on the one just. Mm. Let's see what he comes up with here. All right, pumping up for some magic here. Stay with us so you get to see a little bit of magic in jump kick safing, or whatever you want to call it. Yes, very yeah. thin, yeah. 
yeah, but, but he, this time this is open now here finally he leaves some sort of a shot for yeah. Eklund but fortunate enough that it's completely straight so still a bit of work to do here of course yeah so he's obviously checking how far down he needs to go from a three he's thinking far ahead I like the fact that he's showing positivity in that sense But uh, just checking a few of your comments. <laughs> Miguelis, I know you want to see the view from the Damianos match. So for now, oh God. Wait. Really? Yeah. What was that? Uh, oh, that was that was bad shot. I shouldn't he have played caution first here for this? Um, no, I think it was correct to go around because I do think that the pocket was big enough mm -hmm. for him to push it. But I think he's still a bit tentative because he's behind. You know, if he's seven four up, we all know that the shot will be more into the right side of the pocket and then the cue ball would be around it, two cushions yeah. and with a shot for the two in the center. But he's probably a little bit nervous also because he knows that Damianos is really playing out of his skin. Yeah, we unfortunately we do not have this heart rate monitor here on this table. We just have it on the on the main table. Mm. Carl Averch on the stream. Yeah, Mark Gray safeties. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. He's actually one of the best ones out there as well. Kicking. Too bad. Ah, uh, don't, don't. And <gasps> combination here. I think it's too for thin for the combo for him, but you never know. Vladik of Vladan, sorry, on the stream, you're saying, do I have any aspirations to play on the pro snooker tour? Yes, I would love to. Money is the trouble because I need a sponsor. So if you know anybody that loves snooker and likes a fiery player with a lot of Q power and the ability to try and entertain, plus I'm not slow. <laughs> Then obviously let me know on Daniel Candy Anderson Facebook. You can always contact me there. But yeah, what does it even require to play the EBSA events? Do I just have to enter from the start of a season? I haven't got a clue. Please let me know. Last year I did try Q School, but uh, didn't get anywhere. I played some pretty good players in two of them actually qualifying. So uh, yeah. Not a lot I could do. Meanwhile here, Damianos has left a shot again. I think it just passes the seven. It's not the perfect safety, but again, has to put some juice into cue ball if he's gonna have any hopes of even being able to having a shot at the one. Sorry, the three, getting tired as well. NJ, you get a like for that one. He says, I'm glad I have headphones on. My wife is yelling at me. Are you going to watch pool the whole day? Uh, and he, you basically answered, nope, I'll go play later. That is a badass answer. If I had a wife, she would not tolerate that. <laughs> so does he have a shot? What is he going to do? I think he tries to draw back a bit and then to play the bank. Oh no. All right, so he's just opted to make sure of the pot. And it's 8-8 eight, eight still on the other table. I just wanted to make sure. Konya looking to get on the hill. He's got the six, seven, eight, and nine, it looks. Yep. To me, it looks like that the nine is in the bottom right corner. We almost can't see it for the lamp from table A2. So a seven straight in and an eight and then the nine to get on the hill for a semifinal. Let's see. And he's nicely on the eight. And finally, we get a perfect safety there 
Very good save shot yes. here from Eklund. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff that's been missing from him in this yeah. match. And, uh, you know, finally, it seems like he's getting that form back. Great to see. And Damiano is applauding him. Have you seen him with his cue? He, he was putting the cue on the cushion. Yeah. So is this, I, I saw it here from other players as well. There are some players doing that, some are doing not. But I think it's common for snooker players to do so if there is a really good safety. Yeah, you know, like, you know, tapping yeah, the yeah. table with the cue. Yeah. Um, it does happen in pool. Um, I don't, do you do it in carom? Because that's where you normally play, you said. Mm. Yeah, I, I play carom, yes, you're yeah. right. Yeah, but is it normal to do it there? You, you know, you praise the shot the same way? Um, not really, not really. So mm. um, It's more a pool and snooker yeah. thing, I think. Uh, especially you're after right. a good break off, even. You typically see a quick short tap on the table from snooker players. Uh, so it's just a, you know, the gesture to basically say good yeah. shot and Toshi Vlad on the uh, stream you are saying what's my highest break it is 147 both in practice and in tournament I've got about 20 18 20 uh, X lineup uh, maximums I think stop counting and one official one in tournament in the Danish championships last year in the first round of the Danish championship that uh, that last year so meanwhile we have the first really big foul from Damianos and this could be a turning point I mean he was so far down was it 7-2 I think it was and we're now about to see three racks in a row for Eklund Kachi slowly but surely it's turning in favor of Eklund as you can see, he measured earlier for the four, and now there definitely is the room. Low left, you say? Yes. Yeah. Coming out here for the five ball. Yeah. Yes. Nicely done. And uh, it's, I think, the six passes without any problems, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we see it from the other angle. Yeah, for sure. Let's go and check this one. Then we can also yeah. see Jakob Konya's table. Clear. And obviously, we need to put Jakob Konya's game onto the scoreboard because he got to the hill before Shevchuk. Just top spin, I guess. Yeah. A little bit of insight, which is nice because then he can just basically play this either stop shot. I think it will be stop shot. Don't do any heroics because it's so straight. You can just take a little bit of low right on the cue ball and stop it right there. And you can walk over. Yep, exactly. He knows that he needs to keep it simple because he hasn't been completely flawless in this one. There you see the comeback continues. Yeah. In a few seconds we have seven five here. Yeah. Karim, I can tell you you are so correct. That gets a thumbs up. Kachi is mentally the strongest player. Probably that is a correct statement. I don't know whether or not Jason Shaw has anything to say about that, but I will say that with all the safeties and bad rolls on the break. In this particular match, you know, there was a lot of players that would have thrown in the towel, really. So, uh, nice to see that he's dealing well. Three racks in a row. Eklund on 7-5 down. Can he keep it going? Oh, and Joshua Fila is on the stream. We're praising you. We love your game, and we are missing you here at the tournament. I hope your preparation for the Whirlpool Masters is going absolutely awesome. And I wish you the best of luck in that tournament. So whom would you prefer, Joshua? Albin Ocean or Jeffrey Daluna in your first match there? Yeah, tell us. I think the correct answer from the filler killer is going to say, I will break both of them. <laughs> I will kill them. <laughs> and Toshi Vlad, yeah, then I do need a sponsor. Uh, Alexandru, I have made about, a, I think, 100 uh, centuries in practice, 80 to 100 centuries. I stopped counting again. It doesn't really matter. I do it on the daily. But in tournaments, about 20-odd 
something on national level and a couple of centuries internationally. So yeah, I can play on my day. Ha! Huh. Kaylin says, if NJ from the chat disappears, then we know his wife had something to do with it. <laughs> Please don't kill him. I'm glad you guys are sending in the smileys, the hearts, the likes, the sad faces. It shows you guys care about your players. So let's jump to this view so we get to see Wojciech while there is a little bit of a break on the other table. He's got an open table and he's fighting to stay in a match. He needs to get to Hill Hill 9-9, nine, nine, race to 10 to get some more prize money and a semi-final on his CV in this particular Mass Bucharest Open. Dan Fisher Trophy here in IDM Club. Bucharest, Romania, beautiful club. 40 tables of which 32 of them are equipped with some of the sponsor products light blue tournament blue tournament cloth from simonis the turtle rack is the sponsor as well and aramith pool balls we're loving it absolutely amazing this whole the venue Just a second guys, then I will be back. So Joe Poole is asking who are the commentators speaking? So oh yeah, um, welcome if you are just joining. And let me say, my name is Daniel Candy. I am a player from Denmark who didn't do too well in this particular event. I don't practice enough pool. Currently, though, I am ranked number one with snooker and also the current Danish champion, winning last year the first time f for nine years because the last title I had was in 2008. So very, very proud of that. And uh, my co-commentator is a very big guy from... Uh, the Austrian Billiards Federation. Do you do the filming and some uh, other stuff there? Yes, I'm uh, responsible for media work here and I came here for uh, television production of the uh, performances of Albin Ushan and Mario He. And my relation to billiards is Kerom. Uh, I play three cushion, was Austrian champion three times in singles and with the team, I think 10 or 11 times. Mm. And yeah, my best years were 10 years ago when I was top 50 in the world ranking, also playing the big guys like Blondal, Codron, Sanchez, mm. Max. Can you tell me, like, back in that day, how was the sponsorship for the event? Because I'm thinking, uh, was it possible for you as a top 50 player to somewhat live from it or just semi? No, uh, not really. So uh, for me, it was maybe, I have an ordinary job, so for me mm. it was uh, maybe two to three additional salaries per year. Ah, okay. So, but, but still, it was uh, a good it's supplement. It's okay. Yeah, it is okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Of the, the price money has uh, recently exploded in in three cushion, uh, and uh, yeah, if I would I would really uh, like to play now, but mm. uh, uh, the situation has changed in my life, and I have family, mm. and um, but I really like billiards all disciplines of billiards and uh, I'm really excited to be here at the first time at the Mets Bucharest Open a really great event so if you have the chance yeah. to come here please come here next year uh, it's the biggest event in Europe this year I've heard with 256 players coming from 42 countries that's absolutely amazing. I think there's really only one pool tournament that is higher in terms of, uh, or at the same level, sort of, with 200 plus participants, and that's the Pinneberg Open. Oh, yeah. Typically in Germany, running yeah, in, in, in Pinneberg yeah, in Germany. Yeah. Besides, I played that event also, very nice tournament as well. But this pool hall is actually a step up. Uh, there, Pinneberg still has a few things to work on if it's to be 
the same sort of like um, you know the level of class is pretty much the same but there are just some perks here with like you know call buttons on the wall and yeah. you know if you want to have service uh, Bowers and Wilkins sound system here so everything is super nice uh, but those are just extra perks but it's a super nice hall here and it also is in Penneberg both are classy classy events I have to say another great safety shot here from Damianos it's just not letting up and yeah, 9-9 nine, nine on the other table, as you saw. Or check, keep it alive by sinking the 9. I'm going to go back to this table just for a short while to see what they are like. Looks like a two-cushion escape here. Short cushion, side cushion. Mm -hmm. And try to get the cue ball be back behind the 9, maybe. While he's thinking about that shot, I want to say thanks to Alin for checking out my 147 moment from the Danish Championships last year. It was super, super slow, I tell you. They started filming very late. I think they filmed from the last red or the first, the first uh, last color, meaning that uh, on the yellow. I think I took four and a half minutes for the six colors so that you could class me almost as slow as Albin in some cases there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was so nervous. I'm not going to lie. I, I got the cue ball clean twice in you know the last parts of the match, I think, uh, or that particular break. Oh, what a gap. Ooh. Come on. Oh. How do you get that gap? Mm. Wow. Okay, ball in hand. It's looking ominous for Kachi. But yeah, thank you so much for checking it out. If you want to check it, just search Daniel Candy 147. I think that Max missed escape or Danish championships. It should be able to be found on, uh, on YouTube from last year. We have here uh, Tobias Hoys from Germany yep. uh, telling us that there is the Ardennen Cup with uh, around 400 oh, players. Oh, sorry. We How have could I forget that, that sorry, one? Sorry, uh, Toby, you're completely right. Yep. That's How could I forget that one? Sorry, event, that course. is the biggest one. So many tables into like a huge hall it usually is, right? Like one huge hall with like, what, 40 or 50 tables, something like that? I remember last year this, uh, for I think it was the 40th anniversary of the EPBF in Feldhofen, the European Championship. That was really the biggest event I've ever heard of uh, with some 60, I think 61 mm. tables there. That's really massive. Well, good luck in the charity match with uh, Jennifer Beretta. Kaylin, thank you for your comments here on the chat. We'll try and check as many as we can. Both tables are important, so I can support the Greek saying that we should jump back on this table alone for Damianos because he is still not on the hill. And therefore, I am supporting. We are watching Jakob Konia against... Of course, the um, the reigning champion. Yes, Wojciech Shevchuk. <laughs> you sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they say. <laughs> well, he is from the same country. Hasta la so vista, baby. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Who is your daddy and what does he do? That's a funny movie. But yeah, we all have a different accent, don't we? You should hear the Danish people. They do sound a bit like the Germans, you know, very clear endings of words and stuff. Definitely not as American or UK-ish. We do have a little bit of a twang also from Denmark. Mm. Damianos is not letting up. Bad roll there. I know, of course, you have to hit the ball, but how could he find that gap, Eklenkachi? Unfortunately... This means that there's just two balls left also on the other table. I think For the defending Konya, champion yeah. is going out, yeah, because Konya is uh, just about to knock this nine in if he holds his nerve to grab that important 10-9 win. And that's a mess player getting into the semifinals. They can play too, you know. Super and congratulations. Wow. Oh, yeah. Slow to get out of the chair. Oh, you can see how slumped he is in, in, is in his chair. He's just dead tired. Yeah. He's, He's had some long matches, actually. Yeah, he had, he had f uh, quite a few hill hill yeah. matches, didn't oh. he? 
a little bit with like with Shane, you know, it had to end at some point. Yeah. Uh, but but here another hill hill. It was just almost too much to some, ask. Yeah, you you run out of fuel yeah. then at some point. So uh, throw some likes because Konya is awesome. And commiserations, you could probably send some sad, send some sad smileys as well. I can tell you we're gonna jump back on A1. You can probably smile at that as well, so you can see the ending of this match. And we have to uh, update the score here because Damianos added an, 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 a rack to his score now, leading 8 5. Yeah. Somebody's also mentioning the Pardo Beach uh, open. I'm not sure if I'm mentioning that correctly. Stamatis Pool. My name is Daniel Candy. I'm from Denmark. I know that others have asked before, but I'm going to answer it again. Current Danish snooker champion, and besides me is Andreas from the Austrian Billiard Federation, who's doing a lot of the filming for uh, the Austrian events in Carom, and also filming the Austrian boys up until they actually went out, unfortunately, a couple of rounds ago. Or was it last round? I think it, it was, was this last round. Yeah, 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 last, last 16, round, yeah. yeah. And they asked me to also produce some footage for the Romanian television. That's uh, very good, yeah. 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 So this means that we will have an extra camera on, uh, on, the, on the TV table, correct? Uh, no, it will not mean we have... Yeah, there is an extra camera, but it is not connected to the stream. So oh, it yeah, will yeah. be just a recording. Oh, yeah. And uh, But maybe next year, I already have spoken to uh, the local organizers here yeah. uh, that we can arrange something. Because yeah, a little bit like the Euro Tour where you have the extra yeah, hov yeah. hovering camera so you yeah. get to see you know, either the anguish or the happiness or the yeah. frustration. A moving cam, yeah. Yeah. We need to have that. Oh. Is somebody moving there or making noise? He's just uh, uh, standing up again. Let's see what he's gonna do. All right, is he gonna land plum? Uh, nope, but what about the edit to the side? If they are, yeah, check it. If they are near touching each other, even yes. if they're set to the jaw, he can hit it a little bit thick and he can force it into the pocket by creating that changing angle sort of. Let's check. I uh, can't really see anything on that one. Yeah, this one is better here. Yeah. yeah. Can he avoid the nine though? Does he need to avoid the nine? Oh. I'm surprised he didn't see that. From mm -hmm. the reaction on the six, I would say that they were almost touching. Yes. And this means that he has to hit it thick. Mm -hmm. I would have thought he knew this. But uh, he misjudged it, yeah. Yeah, he, he should have hit it thick because then it would throw thicker into the pocket. That's a mistake. A big chance a now. Big mistake, actually. And let me just turn on the score to 8 5, of course. And of course, also put 10 9 for Jakob Konya. Once again, congratulations of here to him, of course. I think if we would have odds here for both, for. Yeah. Uh, Damianos and for Jakob, then uh, if you bet on them, you would have bet on them, then uh, you would have get a very good uh, uh, got a, a very good quote for them, yeah, because it's not so clear that they are here in the semi final. They are normally you think about other names, but not yeah. Them. I, I, it's nice, you know, to see a couple of se uh, you know setups or upsets, I should say. Um, it can get a bit boring if it's just the same people winning all the time. You know, it's nice yeah, to see course. new people getting a chance at uh, smelling a little bit of silverware. Again, yep. Eric, yes, uh, Jason has won his match on the TV table. Uh oh, as as he was moving. Our commentator was moving in a chair and uh, Damianus just stood up. As to say, man, sit still. But uh, no damage done. The seven is down. And he's got the perfect angle on the eight as well. Go forward with top spin. And I think he can just come down to about between the middle diamond and the left diamond of the end rail. Uh, middle diamond, yeah. And uh, there you see, Egwikachi is just about had enough. 
He gives a nine. Okay, he was never gonna miss that, but still. Yeah. He gives it. Well, Stamatis Pool, thank you so much for enjoying it. Hope you guys in Greece are cheering because your guy is on the hill. 9-5 against one of the greatest players in the world, Mr. Eklenkachi. Yeah, I see the love from the Greeks on the stream. Throw those thumbs up in the air. And Toshi Vlad, yeah. Uh, I actually did end up having a few tears in my eyes. I had to tell myself, stop crying, because I was literally about to cry. So a few tears and, you know, getting hugs from the many times champion, probably the, the best player we've had. Champion-wise in Denmark, Rune Kamba coming and giving me a hug and saying congratulations for the max. Uh, those sort of things went uh, a little bit under my skin. It was very overwhelming. Great break here from Damianos. Three points are there. But for the first time in a while, it seems like he's not getting a roll there. I think the eight ball is covering the two. Time for the jump cue then. Yeah. We want to see that magic. Guys, send those happy thumbs ups. We want to see some amazing love for his jumps. Oh, he's looking at the combination. Oh, <laughs> oh dude, that if he finishes off with that. That would be a shot to end the match, yes. Record your screen, folks. That is a crazy way to end. If he does that, I'm going to stand up and clap. Hmm. Karim says Kachi is paid by the minute. That's a that's a good hourly wage, I must add. That's so funny out there. Oh, we're getting an update on O'Sullivan and uh, Neil Robertson as well. You know, oh. Maria Johanna has just informed us it's eight seven to the rocket. Ah, oh, I wish I could be watching that one as well. I'll just have to check it later on tonight. So, and he's going for it. All right, so. Come on with a good jump shot, dummy on us. We know you're good at it. Come on. Wow. Oh, what wow. a shot. And he does What it. a shot. Wow, that is really. Great, great stuff. What a way wow, to win. That's, that's I really think unbelievable <laughs> shot. So we, we would have, we need uh, a replay of this here. Uh, Maybe how next do we do time. it? Uh, we should have had replay on yes, that. Yes, because that was uh, But an then again, we shot. have recorded it. So guys, yeah. we have that on video and that will we be on it, some yes. sort of a compilation on YouTube for yeah. sure. And Facebook. What a way to end the match. Yeah. Holy moly. So let's put it here, the 10 to 5 victory <laughs> of Damianos Galvarakis. Yeah. Well oh, deserved. so he's checking oh. it again. Let's yeah, see what yeah. he does. I hope he, I hope he takes a look at it, you know, in the sense that he needs to hit it thick. He needs to hit it thick, that one. That's when they're frozen. That's how you change the angle. Oh, well, look at all the love coming in on the stream. Yeah, I see. Wow. Wow. But that was really an amazing shot here in this decisive moment. Yeah. Wow. Oh, hats off to Damianos. He is a grinder, man. You know, he, he, he took his time. He didn't let, let up too many mistakes. And he also made sure to, you know, not take any rush, rush decisions. He just, you know, went a while, ran around the tables and, and took, took the amount of time that was needed to.